Are you paranoid today about a current conspiracy? <laughs> Welcome to the Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. This week we're in chapter 22 of 1 Samuel. I've titled this chapter From Caves of Distress to Community Connections. So yesterday we discovered that Doag, the foreigner, sold out Ahimelech, the priest, because he saw him in Nob supply David with bread and a sword. So Saul, who is now furious, commands Ahimelech and his family of priests to come to Gebeah where he is, only a couple of miles away. And let's see what happens next in verses 11 through 17. Then the king sent to summon Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitib, and all his father's house, the priests who were at Nob, and all of them, all of them came to the king. And Saul said, Here now, son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword and have inquired of God for him, so that he has risen against me to lie in wait as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king, And who among all your servants is so faithful as David? Who is the king's son-in-law and captain over your bodyguard and honored in your house? Is today the first time I have inquired of God for him? No, let not the king impute anything to his servant or all in my father's house, for your servant has known nothing at all about this much or little. And the king said, you shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. And the king said to the guard who stood about him, turn and kill the priests of the Lord because their hand is with David and they knew that he fled and did not disclose it to me. Wow, uh, just so you know, I think this section of scripture in the story of Saul and David is deeply disturbing. Saul is now so paranoid that he sees even his closest and most godly allies as foes rather than friends. Foes rather than friends. Now, Ahimelech, presents to David a four-pronged and very clear and logical defense on this matter. Number one, he understood David as a loyal servant, son-in-law, and captain of his guard. Number two, he, Ahimelech, performed all his royal duties as required. Number three, he affirmed his loyalty to Saul. And number four, he declared his non-involvement in any kind of plot against Saul as king. But none of this is convincing to Saul. David's actions combined with what Jonathan has done to betray him, Michal, his daughter, has done, Samuel the prophet has done, and now Ahimelech the priest, confirmed by Doeg, the enemy, are just too much for the paranoia that's stirring around in Saul's mind. <laughs> the circle of the conspiracy continues to grow in his head, and Saul cannot see the situation any other way. Therefore, Saul pronounces a verdict as the high prosecutor in the land, and then his men refused to act on his verdict. I am sure their inaction only confirmed his fears of this growing conspiracy. You know, God is always up to something, but it's always righteous. But his righteousness will expose unrighteousness. Sometimes we may interpret this as a conspiracy against us, especially when we are the ones opposing God by acting unrighteous which is the case with Saul. Saul's verdict exposes even his desire to play God in this situation. Note that his words are the same as God's judgment for human sin back in Genesis chapter 2. You shall surely die. Those are a resounding gong of Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. But Saul is not God. <laughs> Therefore, his paranoia leads him to an unjust verdict and the sentencing of a line of innocent and defenseless priests. Saul is paranoid, and it feels like he's losing control. But the text presents no sign that he has ever lost any control in the kingdom. Even David perceives him to still be in control. He sees himself as Saul's subject and merely just wants to keep himself and his family safe. David has no desire to take the kingdom from Saul, Saul still has absolute control, but now is being completely controlled by his fears. 
by his fears. Fear is an essential God-given emotion designed to signal you when you perceive maybe a threat or a danger or something unknown. Fear is designed to alert you and prepare you to respond to a challenge. But when you allow fear to control you, as Saul has done, you are prone to making irrational decisions founded in senseless conspiracies of your will rather than the sound certainty of God's will. And I will say this, there are so many things to be fearful of today, the economy, war, immigrants, storms, like I'm running from today, illicit drugs, party division, and the next election. At the same time, you also have personal fears, don't you, that demand your immediate attention today. Fears for your family, fears of sickness, fears of the economy or finances in your family's life. But you cannot let any of these fears control you. Saul is an example of a man who is in complete control of a kingdom, but He's acting like he's out of control because, because his fears are completely controlling him. Don't live like this. It will drive you mad. Instead, let your fears drive you to faith in God, who is the only one to ever be feared. I love you guys. I pray this is a blessing to you today. If it is, share it with someone else, and I'll see you right back here again.